we are talk, we are impacting quality improving quality uh, we are we want to be partners in innovation we want to uh, service better we want to be agile we want we want to be resilient we want to avoid this this is the most talked about area in the last two and a half years that you know we are you know we started with covid the war has come a texas storm comes some sea of japan something happens so it's like a marathon that we are all running and we focus on the lever of sustainability because you know uh, the environment and the customers expect you to be following good practices in terms of improving efficiency of operations we are saying that how can we avoid doing tracking follow up repetitive data collection from various people how do we update data so this is not exactly digital but it is automated so you automate these activities so again going back to the purpose that you have time to do things which impact value and also serve the purpose of security So let us talk about some use cases that what is possible, and we will spend a time, little time here. So if we look at broadly the process of source to contract, what can be done? So here analytics plays a role where you categorize your spend, you look at various uh, trends in it, you use ML here, and find out that across the organization or across outside world what happens. Then you sense demand. See, this is we are in an extremely volatile environment. So what what do you do? You can be proactive. How do we proactive? You need to sense demand. You predict demand using AI. I think one of the points that was raised was that our vendors are not honoring contracts. They are not supplying material or providing services. So can we scan the environment who are our suppliers? Can we look at geographical risks and say that do I want to read? Can I see suppliers and say that this is a different geography where the supplier is? Can we look at recommendation selection of alternate suppliers through this scan? You look at landed cost analysis across various geographies. Say something you are buying from say Japan, US. Uh, UAE, you compare and say that this is the call that I will take. This is all happening today manually and it takes a while. Cost modeling, whether the, you know you build the cost from bottom up or you do some other, you know you discuss with your uh, say your R and D or manufacturing and say that this is how can I do cost modeling and again technology helps here. Uh, use of e auction. When you contract, you manage contracts with smart contracts. You know you can get uh, uh, various reminders, etc. You don't have to worry about that. You know this person has forgotten about that the contract has expired. And for the tail spend, see what is our objective? Our objective is to liberate ourselves from a lot of routine tasks so that we can focus on purpose of procurement. So to focus on purpose of procurement. You have to, you know, do a self-service of tail spend, and there are various technologies. There are experts sitting here who can, you know, help you do that. But you know, you give, you have, you have a large tail tail spend takes a lot of time. You put it on catalogs, you put it on auctions. People can choose themselves. They can directly get service from the vendor. So all these initiatives are supposed to contract, help in visibility of spend. Prediction on, uh, you know, potential suppliers, which gives us a, you know, a leeway of finding other sources. So, uh, it gives us predict prices, predicts that here you can finalize a contract, and we manage contract. Let's go to the next process: procure to pay. Again, here you need a demand visibility, so you sense demand. You predict demand. Uh, you predict stockouts. 
So one, one can predict sort out that, that this is my direct material. These are expected to be sort out in the next four weeks, five weeks, six weeks. Looking at the current, because the lead time is gone, lead time is gone. So, the, so how do you sense that that what is going to happen two months and forty-five days and twenty-five days? You predict sort out. And then you, based on all this data, you replenish stock from supplier basis prediction. Again, from a technology domain, it moves from uh, predictive to prescriptive, where you provide input to your buyers and say that uh, this is going to be sorted out, please send a reminder to a supplier, or you search for another supplier. And, and from, again, uh, you know, you change norms because the easiest thing to do today, theoretically, is to increase norm and keep higher energy. You don't get material in a separate issue. But so, how do you increase or decrease norms? That is basis. What is the sense in the market? You are you don't become reactive. I spoke about prescriptive in the sense that this. What's prediction? There is a prescription of what what is to be done. One, you one uh, you know you automate repetitive tasks to RPA. You move to a situation where the POs are automated. There are no such POs. You don't interact. You have you know room based approvals etc. Based on how deliveries are happening, you look at real time tables. Another area, and this again going back to the various levers is about quality. So, in traditional way, you measure quality as you know non-conformances that you have got. But if you are able to influence quality basis predictive analytics and say that this is, for example, if you are looking at trend of data for last three years, see all this talk of AI and ML is all based on data. If you don't have data, these are just buzzwords. So if you have a large set of data and you're looking at various, you know, within your specification, if there is a variation, you can predict a potential quality problem. You can be ahead in the game before the quality department tells you that this is safe. And on the soft side, you monitor, you know, you monitor slow moving, non moving, remove wastages, or sort of avoid wastages. So basically, by minimum human intervention, one should run requirement to pay. Let's come to another process which we all do in supplier relationship. And we have seen that when new vendors were introduced in the last two, two and a half years, we never, we rarely went for a visit. So, you know, it happened virtually. So supplier visit to augmented reality either is happening today. The other important thing that one of the points was raised about risk. See, from a risk management perspective, one would have to go to the network of the supplier. So supply, you know the supplier, and you know, you can always talk to them that what's happening. But if from a, from a proper risk management, and there are technologies available, you map the supplier network. And say that what is happening in that work, in that network, and then get a sense of what, what is going to happen to you. So this is a new paradigm again, which is uh, work in progress, because this is all that we have realized in the last two and a half years, that this, the vendor has come that, you know, there is a COVID outbreak in China, and my, my supplies are coming from China, I can't help. So it, it helps if you also map the network of the supplier. Obviously, we do supplier collaboration. You can up the game in terms of exchange of information and documents. You can work on collaborative innovation projects. Uh, you can answer supplier queries on payments, etc., through a chatbot, and and look at sustainability reporting. And this is more, you know, sustainability is about you know talking to vendors, getting the reports, reporting, etc. So one can move to a more proactive supplier management and risk mitigation. So this is, you know, this is like a universe of what I thought that could happen. But what are the key success factors if we have to do all this? 
All this cannot happen together. So one would again go, have to go back to strategy, the six, seven levers that I spoke about. What is that you want to impact today? Pick one or two, look, prioritize based on that, look, go to your customers and talk, go to your management and say what I want to prioritize. Have a multi-year roadmap. Work with, you know, your team, stakeholders, etc. so that the team management becomes more effective. Have processes which are capable of for digital technology, not just cut paste because it won't work. And obviously the right technology solution has to be there. So I thought that I would give an overview of how one can go for a digital procurement journey. Thank you. Change management within the organization. 
that the marketing or the sales organization also plays equal role into this particular use case? That's a fair question. Uh, so, see, who are the affected parties? Who is getting impacted by all this supply chain? It is secure. So you have to move out of your boundary, influence your supply chain, uh, you know, police and say that I need to sell them. One or you would have to influence your management to say that I need a, a period of next six months visibility. Or if there is volatility, can I get a 15 day advance period of any major volatile situation? So you go back, talk to them. And you influence a demand sensing solution. For example, and, and just giving an example, if you have a pending order, even if you look at pending order velocity, which is, you know, you might have a pending order for, say, two weeks, three weeks, if you look at that velocity and do a simple prediction and up or down or down, it will greatly help you. Even if you don't have this kind of you know, a large period kind of demand visibility. You can still look at these small, small things and do your norms changes based on this velocity. And there, you don't need large, you know, a major investment in technology. Influence your uh, supply chain guide. Because it's a fair ask. Hello? Uh, Hello? Myself Chandrasekhar Mehta from Mumbai Metro. Actually, in the Metro, which is the latest technology, which has been uh, widely used in Mumbai, uh, Mumbai as well as in India as a whole. But there are many, many challenges in the Metro procurement. Like many of the items, almost more than 50, 60 items are imported, and as well as there are the challenges of original equipment manufacturers means they are OEM and we have to depend upon the source, only that, that source. So how do we do the, uh, the management, risk management as well as the cost uh, management? Because in that case, when the items are to be uh, procured only from the original equipment manufacturers. So how do we do that? from from our perspective we are uh, doing it in house 